Welcome everyone, happy holidays. Um, I'm Donnie Ann, Tanya Rome's membership director, and I wanna welcome you to our fruitcake fun part two, our big fruitcake reveal with food blogger and cookbook author, Megan Kino of the blog Country Cleaver and this beautiful book, Cast Iron Gourmet. This is a follow-up demo where we'll learn how to frost our fruitcake, gift it, and, and, and even mail it. Uh, today's event is part of our holiday baking extravaganza presented by California Prunes. You can find the full schedule of events on cherrybomb.com. So without further ado, I would love to bring on Megan Kino. Here you go, I hear you. In like a technical glitch, like right at the beginning to go seamlessly into <laughs> class number two. <laughs> so um, we're excited to talk prunes. Yes. And then we're also going to check in with our fruitcake, the twins. The twins. Or the twins. The it's, twins are great. <laughs> the twins are great. I was, it was, I was, I was uh, peeing everybody in the chat. Some people, some people already ate there. So, um, no. it was delicious. I, I brought, I brought up the chat too, so I could read along this time, which is, I didn't do that last time. So I feel like I missed out on so much. So I'm like, okay, how do I do this? I want to see where everybody's, where everybody is. And I saw Kate that said, she's like, uh, I, I went already. <laughs> yes. You are my people. <laughs> you are people. Exactly. Um, I have to say, I, I can't wait. I've been like, these these have been in a, a place in my closet where it's nice yes. and cool and and um, and dry. So, but I made Perfect. it feel nice and sealed and stuff. But I'm Excellent. excited to. I, I did spray it a few times, mm -hmm. like I was instructed. I had my my Your spray bottle, my spray bottle for full of brandy, which <laughs> I know I've still got mine too, <laughs> which was brilliant. I was like, I never seen that before. It it is. I mean, yeah, a couple sprays. For the fruitcake, one for you. I mean, you know, you got to keep that holiday cheer going somehow. Yeah, I know exactly. And <laughs> I have to say, ever since our fruitcake like class, I've been like, I'm I have an addiction to prunes. <laughs> like right? I swear, this is like my like I, I'm just on my own will. I'm like buying prunes now, like they, on the regular because I just love them so much. Like yeah. I, the perfect snack, honestly. Like I've been. Yeah, I've, it's just been so hectic this week and I'm so happy to have them. They're just like, it feels like I'm eating my fruit every day when I, when I eat right. it. Right. You feel so, you, you feel like so much less guilt <laughs> and yes, they're sweet too. too, which is like, I've got a serious, you know, sweet tooth, especially during the holidays. And then I can have something that's actually healthy and actually sweet. <laughs> and I don't yes. have to worry about all of the added sugars and all of that stuff it's all natural and I love that and it's so satiating and I kind of gotten like a little like wormhole of like looking researching about prunes yeah. and I and I you told me you got to go visit um the farms which like sounds amazing yeah. and I didn't know so those of you this is like I just I just wanted to know like like a palm is a palm a prune I was just like just mm -hmm. getting in this but it was so interesting they have this special like varietal called a petite Asian plum yep. that was mm -hmm. brought to California from France during the gold rush. Yes. And I thought it was so interesting. And like, Isn't I, that cool? yeah. And the, I mean, just the consistency is great. I like, I really like this varietal. So that must've been so yeah. cool to go see the farms. Like it I, really was, uh, my, it, it absolutely is. I love seeing, you know, where <laughs> my husband's a, a reformed farmer. He's a nurse now. Um, you know, so I, I joke, he's a reformed farmer, but, um, you know, we, over with the family, we do dry crops, wheat, lentils, you know, all of that kind of stuff in Eastern Washington. Um, and that's been a really big thing about Country Cleaver is wanting to understand where my food comes from. I've worked with uh, beef cooperatives like Washington Beef um, to understand what our local producers are doing. And I've done this uh, with other producers and other uh, crops and agricultural uh, cooperatives and communities throughout the country. And ca uh, California Prunes was one of them. And it was such an honor to be able to go there, meet the, meet the producers, meet the farmers, meet the families that grow these prunes and provide us with all of these tasty delights that we can put into our fruitcake. So it's, it's really enlightening to me. I find it incredibly gratifying. Um, to understand what these people do and how seriously they take it um, and what a what a mission it is and how they how they raise their families to to care for the land and and produce great great things like California prunes so yeah I yeah yeah and like I know that they have these like big drying tunnels and yeah isn't that it's really cool <laughs> like I know like, I have to go check it out um, that's on my bucket list mm -hmm. Carrie said she'll um she'll send me there one day so I will uh, take you up on that Carrie um all right. So <laughs> let's talk fruit cakes. Let's do, let's, let's say hi to the twins. Let's, let's say hi to the twins. Up. Let's see how <laughs> they're doing. 
I haven't opened mine yet, so I'm actually really excited. Like, it's- well, let's let's open them up. Let's cut them open. Let's like cut off a slice. Let's start some snacking because I feel we have waited. I mean, our patience has been immeasurable. So, um, uh, after our class, I did make those two fruit cakes during class. So, um, one of them is older than the other. So I kind of wanted to show you guys the stages that it's gone through. If you've been like maintaining them, you're like, oh my gosh, is this right? Um, and I want to assure you it is everything that you were probably seeing is probably fine, <laughs> but it's just something like when you haven't made a fruitcake and aged one, you're just like, is that what, I don't know what's happening. I'm not going to lie. I'm a little scared. Sometimes I'm just like, oh, is it doing it? Or is it rotting in there? Like I don't mind. Yeah, no, it is. It, <laughs> it, 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 it is. It's like this whole new thing. So don't worry. That's why we're here. Yes. Um, so this is the one that I made during, pretty sure this is the one I made during class. Oh, this is the one I made during class. <laughs> um, and you're going to see two distinct differences in the cake and mostly like in the cheesecloth um, is that one is going to have soaked up the brandy a little more. So one is kind of a little more white. It hasn't soaked up all of those sugars, but it's got the alcohol. So if you're noticing like the discoloration in the cheesecloth, my biggest thing is just to say, don't worry. That is what is supposed to happen. Um, I, I had people, they're like, is this right? I'm like, yes, it is. It absolutely is. Once it gets soaked, um, the brandy, the sugars, they're all going to like make this cheesecloth kind of sticky and it's going to turn that brown color. It doesn't mean you've done anything wrong. And then the other thing is that as they age, this is already a dense fruit cake. It will have like gotten denser. It's like, did it shrink? It kind of did. <laughs> wow. Yeah. So, um, so when we slice into these, you're going to notice that it is very, uh, hearty. <laughs> Um, and that's okay. Again, that's what it's supposed to be. Um, if you chopped your food, fruit super fine, um, it might just slice really perfectly. Sometimes if you slice it and, and you used bigger chunks of fruit, you're going to have bigger, like, it'll look like holes, I guess that, you know, kind of like a sourdough when you piece of fruit falls off, there's a hole there. Um, but don't worry, you guys. Um, oh, Jacqueline, oh, we'll Jack send you the recipe. We have it. Um, from Megan's, um, Megan has it up on her website and Catherine on our team will, will include that, but yeah, there you go. Oh, there we go. Thanks, Jenna. Thank you, Jenna. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so this is where we are. We've done two weeks again, like in class, you can do this longer. You can eat it the day you make it. You can eat it after a week of aging. Like really the flavors just change everything kind of, um, it's perfect. They it's perfect. It's a little baby. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the fruits will just, uh, the flavors will just change slightly. The, the alcohol will mellow out. Um, so you might have more of that alcohol tang and, and burn, I guess. Um, if you eat it like after a week versus two weeks, it'll just taste slightly different and it's just fine. It's totally personal preference. My sweet spot, two to three weeks. And that's when I'm like, yes, that's when I love it. That's when it works for me. Um, and oh, how long have I aged one? Six months. You've done a six month. Fruit I've cake done cake. a six month fruit cake. Yeah. And basically I actually, every week. um, actually I kind of forgot about it. <laughs> um, and it was, it was still good. Like, I'm like, let's just see. It was really good. <laughs> whoa okay I was like, like this. I kinda, I'm like excited to to eat this yeah so let's go ahead and let's let's cut one of them open <gasps> okay so go ahead and do your unwrapping because then when you see it you're just like no way <gasps> you're right it's beautiful it's that dark brown color is just so gorgeous and then you can see the fruit like dotting it and FYI some I mean cheese clay cheesecloth is kind of you know flimsy so if you get a couple of loose threads it just pick them off they're fine it's not they gonna hurt you oh my gosh it's just beautiful it, it really darkens in color yeah it really does it um and then just the smell it just like everything starts to smell like fruitcake <laughs> no way I need to get my knife oh yeah yeah go get that and then I did make one with nuts and then I made one without this is this one actually has the the walnuts and the pecans in it as well 
Oh my goodness. It's so pretty in the slice. You can see all that fruit. Yeah. Oh, Isn't wow. that great? That looks so I don't so know if you guys, great. I'll try to bring it up towards the camera. So I go, oops. <laughs> so you can kind of see what mine looks like. So you'll, you'll see like little pieces of the zucchini. You'll, you'll see the nuts, the uh, currants, the uh, raisins, everything else like that. Yeah. It I, yeah. It is so fun. Like I didn't do the best job cutting it because <laughs> they're all different sizes, but it, you're right. It's totally fine. It's rustic. It's see rustic. It's perfect. It's like and, big prune right there. <laughs> and I, I like it when it's got the big chunks. Cause like, I want to know, like, I want to see that fruit. I want to taste like the individual fruits and how they, you know, do their thing with everybody else. And it totally works. So it's, this is like I was saying in the first video, this is a seriously forgiving recipe. So if you're like, oh, this doesn't look right. It's going to taste good. <laughs> so like, fear not. I'm going to, I'm going to eat it. And please eat a piece. Yeah, please do. <laughs> wow. Okay. Has it changed that your mind about fruitcake? Is yes. it a game changer? It's a okay. total game changer. This is like so mm -hmm. holiday. I love it. Right. It's like, yeah. Like banana bread, zucchini bread vibes, but it's so much more than that. Cause there's just so much going on. There's so much great texture in it from yeah. the nuts and all the dried fruit, but it's just those holiday like spices oh, are so good. I don't usually, yeah. I don't usually bake with all those very much. Like and, and it does. It seems like kind of overkill. You're like two teaspoons of allspice. Yeah, seriously, because it, those flavors, they mellow out a little bit. Um, Kate, yeah, I saw your comment. Um, the stickiness on the outside is totally normal. Um, it's from the marin marinated fruits and, um, all of the sugars that are left over in the bread. So you're totally good. It should be kind of sticky. Game changer people. Very good. See, so we're changing minds. <laughs> oh my gosh, dang it. I'm going to do this every year. This is so fun. That is my goal okay. to make everybody want to do this. <laughs> okay. So now we have this delicious fruit cake, mm -hmm. but we can add more to it. Like, you know, how oh. would you serve it for people? Um, you know, how would you present it maybe at a party or maybe mm -hmm. like, I can see this also being like for breakfast. Like, yeah, you know, I absolutely like have this with a cup of coffee. Um, so during the holidays, there are a lot of ways you can serve this. You can serve it um, what we like to do is putting it on like a cookie board and doing a cookie tray, just do slices, um, individual slices, and then slice them in half again. Um, because it is rich, you know, you want people to have a few bites, go have some cookies, come back, you know, do their thing. Um, so you don't want to like overload them. So I, I would recommend doing that. Like if you're going to have like a cookie, a cookie tray for the holidays, um, to serve this right alongside it. It's perfect. Um, I love having it with my tea or coffee. And it's just like that nice sweetness that complements like the coffees and unsweetened teas and all that kind of stuff. Um, so it's like a really nice balance there. It's not too sweet too. It's not like cloying. Mm -hmm. Like, and like, it's, it's delicious. It's, it's perfect. I mean, it's so good. Oh. I'm so glad. Yes. Wow. <laughs> and no, and then um, before, you not. can toast it too. And um, the other thing I've honest to God been thinking about trying to do, I say this every year and I still haven't, is making a French toast out of it. <laughs> Oh my God, that would be so good. I keep like meaning to do that and I just haven't. Um, but then, you know, if you want to do um, a dessert, you can always do um, a brandy tart sauce, which is something that we're going to show you guys today. Ooh, brandy. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And yeah. we use that leftover, like, I still have my jar. I have another jar I made because I was just obsessed with this. Mm -hmm. I, wanted, I wanted more of this, this syrup. The syrup. Yeah. You can, you can absolutely use regular brandy um, that you have or the syrup. And if you were here for our first class and, and if you look at my recipe, um, add more brandy to your marinated fruit so that you have additional to siphon off and save for hard sauce, for um, an after dinner, you know, like little aperitif or um, putting it in your coffee or your tea for a hot toddy. I mean, the possibilities are endless. This stuff is like, liquid holiday gold. So do not waste it. <laughs> so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move this little guy, um, this, this setup here, and we'll go ahead and we'll work on our hard sauce. Well, I, wait, can I, um, I, I want to, cause I'm going to see my parents. No, you can, you can totally, move okay. on from stuff, but I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. I really want my parents to eat this and I'm going to see them this weekend. How do I store this in the fridge? Yeah. Um, so storing it in the fridge is totally fine. I recommend storing it in like a veggie drawer somewhere that's got low humidity. Mm -hmm. Um, 
so that you can, you know, turn off the, the airflow. You want it to be kind of dry, but just cold. Um, and you can, you can just put it in there in the foil with the cheesecloth and that should be just fine. Okay. Um, if that's all you, if you just have somewhere cold, my garage is really cold and dry. Um, I honest to God, put it up on the very top of my like freezer, of my garage as is just in the foil and you're totally fine. Um, if you do make this and you are making a version that does not have alcohol and you're using like apple cider instead, you do need to keep it refrigerated and don't age it as long because the alcohol is what um, prohibits the bacterial growth. So um, if you do that, just know that it's kind of going to be like, let it rest a day or two and then eat it. Um, but you do have to have it refrigerated. So just know that going in. Um, but if you're traveling for a weekend, you can basically, it's kind of nice. If you're traveling for a weekend, you can throw it in the car with you. Um, people have flown with it. I sent it with my boss to his family in Florida. They literally take it through the airport. So I also took it to the airport in the last class. They're like, I'm taking this to the airport. I'm like, oh my goodness. Yes, so, it'll, it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> Security just, shouldn't yeah, okay. ban you. <laughs> All right. So now to the brandy sauce, which sounds delicious. Yep. Okay. So I've got a bowl here. And then um, a hard sauce is really nice. It's basically uh, butter, sugar, and brandy. Um, and what's really nice about this is that it's super adaptable so that you can um, add additional spices to it if you want to. We'll just do a really simple version um, for us. And because it is dairy and sugar, you do need to refrigerate it and then it gets hard again, hence the hard sauce. Um, if you are gifting this and you want to ship it, you can also buy um, pre-made and pre-jarred hard sauce that is shelf stable um, and send that along with your fruitcake package as well. Smart, smart. Yeah. I don't want to be giving anybody food poisoning by sending like, you know, I mean like. Yeah, yeah. Know. You don't want to send them like it's a. Just awkward. Makes yeah, the next yeah. holiday a little weird. <laughs> so I've got um, a half a cup of butter here that's been uh, softened. And that's just so that um, it mixes with the sugar and makes that nice creamy um, sauce. Since you don't want to use anything hard, uh, you can use melted and melted and cooled, so it kind of solidifies again. Um, you just really want to make sure that it's really quite soft. And then I'm also going to sift to make sure that I avoid lumps. I'm actually going to sift the sugar um, into into this as well. So. And that's just to get any big chunks. That's just to get any big baked chunks. And of course, when I pour it, it goes everywhere. So, uh, <laughs> and this is about a half, it's a half a cup of, um, a half a cup of butter and a cup and a half of powdered sugar. Um, I like this because it dissolves faster than using like a granulated sugar, which you wouldn't need as much of, but you're going to have to, um, beat for longer to get that smooth consistency. Mm -hmm. Gosh, you don't need a lot of that fruitcake. Like I literally had the small slice, but I know yeah. like full. Oh. It's really satisfying. Yeah. And that's why like, it's really nice with a cookie tray is that it's just a couple of like bites and you're not, you're not going to go overboard or anything like that. Well, I'm just pushing this through now because this is. Okay. Let me move this over. Okay. Now here's the fun part. <laughs> the big bottle of brandy or the syrup. <laughs> and I wasn't kidding. Like I really do buy this at Costco because I mean, this is for three rounds of fruitcake. I go through half of it. So, um, you know, you did, you did, so you did three rounds this, this year. So you, wow. Yeah. 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 Um, so three rounds of fruitcake this year. So you'll definitely use it. Why am I opening this? I wanted to use the syrup, but use whatever you've got on hand. It's totally fine. Some people have, um, instead of brandy used uh, whiskey, used bourbon, um, you know, that kind of thing, whatever you guys want to do is, you know, totally flexible. I'm just like a traditionalist, um, based, you know, for our recipe, I just love the brandy flavor, um, but you can do what, whatever works for you. So no judgment. This is a no judgment zone. No judgment over here. <laughs> okay. So I'm opening up my jar of the syrup and I mean, it is like a super sticky syrup here. And if you do shake it, some there's like little particles and solids from the fruit that will sink to the bottom. I kind of pre-shook mine. Um, and you'll want to, you'll want to get that out too. Cause it just at, imparts that little, little bit of flavor. So we'll start with about two tablespoons of the syrup or brandy, whatever you choose to use. And this just infuses some more of those nice fruity flavors from your marinated fruit in there. Sorry, 
crying. <laughs> I'm just munching over here. Go for it. That's why we're here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then I've just got a uh, my my mixer here, and I'm just gonna beat this until it starts to come together and form that kind of smooth frosting. So Sandy wants to know if you age it for more than two weeks, do you continue to brush it with or brush or spray with brandy weekly? Um, not necessarily weekly. You'll find a you'll find a groove that um, kind of works for you. You'll you'll start to see like how fast the alcohol evaporates, um, and you know check it every week, and then you might not have to respray it every week. It might be two weeks, um, you know that kind of thing. It's it, it really just kind of depends on what your storage situation looks like. Um, check on it. Don't you know completely forget about it. Um, but even if you do, like I did you're probably going to be fine. There's enough, there's enough booze in the fruit that you, you're probably okay. Um, Allison is hard sauce and brandy butter the same thing. Yeah, I think so. I think it's just a, um, a regional thing. People call it the different things, but I think, I think, yeah, I think we're pretty spot on. It's just same thing called something different. So here we go. We're starting to get that, uh, that creaming together and I'm going to just go a little longer um, with the brandy. It does impart that, you know, nice, nice cream color to it. And I just like to whip mine a little extra. You want it to be nice and light and fluffy. I'm going to test it too. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, <laughs> that's the good oh, dance. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like with a lot of sweet things, um, Apparently Amazon's here. It's oh, okay. okay. <laughs> um, and it, like with a lot of things, if you add a pinch of salt to this, which I'm going to go find my salt. Oh, of course I forgot it. Um, oh, my British stepmom called it brandy butter. See, perfect. <laughs> tell, tell your, tell your um, stepmom hi and happy holidays because uh, also I am a total Anglophile and I like dream of a British Christmas. Like just, oh, oh that's fun. That is like my dream. <laughs> Um, but with sweet things, adding a little pinch of salt will um, give it like a little more depth of flavor and bring out that sweetness in a slightly different way. Um, so I always recommend just like an, a little pinch, rip, whip it again and test it. And you'll see that that it just provides that little extra lingering flavor mm -hmm. to it. So I'm going to grab that. And what's interesting about this recipe, you're not doing it over a stovetop. Yeah, that's really nice, isn't it? Um, yeah, it's nice because then you don't have to get, you know, I don't know, it's just melting things and then burning it. Yeah, exactly. One last thing. The key to that is just that you're using softened butter. You know, yeah. um, I mean, you can if you want to, you know, if you're in a rush and you kind of have to like melt butter really, really fast, but leave it on the counter for an hour or microwave it for like, you know, 20 seconds, 25 seconds until it starts to just get that little melty look and then you're fine. Okay. Okay, just a pinch of salt, re-whip. This is my brandy butter dance. Oh, that's it. <laughs> I'm going to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. So here's, here's my, my one slice, and then I'm going to get that other big, beautiful slice and grab a spoon. And you can just spread it on top um, if you want to. If you do heat this up, the butter will melt more and it will start to absorb into the fruitcake. Oof. So, so there yeah. you go. So you can eat it either way. You can have it while it's you know just out of the bowl. You can heat up your fruitcake, put a little dollop on there, and then she would steam it and serve it warm. I mean, yeah, it's perfect. You can do whatever you want. Like the possibilities are endless. <laughs> yes. Yes. And I know you've done in the past too, like where you've mm -hmm. done icing, um, yeah. on top. Um, I know, yeah, you can just serve it with butter. Um, so many things. Um, this is delicious and I'm so excited to share this with my family. I, am I, so, so pleased. I don't know who to gift it to. It's just, it's like, who's worthy. <laughs> the baby, yeah. I was like, I tell you love the most. Exactly. Yeah. You start to like whittle down that list real quick. <laughs> yeah. 
So, like, oh, great aunt Ida. Well, she was gonna. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's now like kind of go into gifting. Like, so yes. what are some, what are some tips um, you'd give some of us like for, for gifting something like this? I know um, someone was like, traveling with it I know you also were shipping you like you ship these quite a bit to friends so let's start with shipping because I think like if I wanted to share this with somebody across the country what what would be the best Mm -hmm. way to make sure um they get there okay yeah so I mean thank goodness they're kind of dense so they're not going to quite break apart like cookies and if you've wrapped it up really tight in the foil it will hold it together which is really nice that's pretty darn reassuring um a few ways that you can do it is um if you're wanting to decorate it like super nice um i really like these flipper boxes that you can find in your gift wrapping section at um most stores i think you know anywhere that you find gift wrapping you can find like these they're they're folded flat you just unwrap them and then you can stick your fruit cake in there wrap it up again in something pretty and then ship it um so it it, it actually fits in there like really nice and then you can wrap it up like any other gift um, oops, Separate. there we go. The little edges and, might catch. And you pretty much like make, you want to make sure, I guess it just can't move around too much. So yes. you would put this in another box and then make sure that box is insulated. Yeah. You, or this one's really, I mean, it's moving a little bit, put some like, um, either wrap it in a dish towel, like a gift towel or something like that. So that it doesn't slide. Then somebody gets like a cool, cute little towel and then wrap this in um, like brown shipping paper, stamp it, have your kids help you out um, and have them like do some art on the outside. And then you can just write the name on there, address it, ship it. And um, we do recommend that um, shipping the alcohol, the boozy version is the best course of action. Um, if you do, you can also find pie boxes. Like um, I know that there are some retailers, you can order them online, like wooden pie boxes or loaf boxes. Um, and that they have some spare room that you can put a couple of ice packs in there. Um, we know that with shipping delays and everything like that, you wanna make sure that you're not gonna poison someone for the holidays. That is not a gift that keeps on giving. Um, so shipping it with a couple of ice packs and then doing like two two day shipping is really um the best way to do it to make sure that it arrives as fresh as possible as fresh it's aged fruit cake but you know what i mean Mm -hmm. um and it will get there and everybody can still enjoy it so um that's what i would recommend my 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 parents are so wonderfully sweet and OCD and uh, over-engineer everything. <laughs> um, ask them how long it took them to build a house. <laughs> 12 years, <laughs> 12 years, because it had to be perfect. Uh, my stepdad created like a actual shipping box for this thing that had like actual cut to size insulation so that he could package it, put ice, ice packs on it and ship it and it would be fine. So you don't have to go that far, <laughs> but um, you know, you, you want to make sure that it arrives safely. So um, wrap it, make sure it doesn't shake too much. Um, but any box that it'll fit in will do. I love these just because they're nice, easy, pretty. They fold flat. Um, and then, you know, you can also use them again if you don't ship it too far. So um, brown, brown paper packaging, you know, tied up with bows, you know, all those favorite things kind of things. And but making sure that it, it stays cool. It needs to stay cool in this box. It's not like cookies. Yeah. Because cookies, you can, you can ship room temp. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Staying cool is is really helpful. Does it need it? It will be fine. Um, just do two day shipping. You know, you don't want it to be sitting there in a warehouse for like a week, um, especially if it's going somewhere warm like Florida. Um, that would just not be super ideal. So if you're going to ship it, you know, somewhere warm, definitely think about ways to include a couple of ice packs that you don't mind getting rid of. Um, but if you're going, you know, somewhere cold to cold, you're probably going to be fine with two day shipping. Uh, so an attendee had asked. Um, would an aged fruitcake be okay frozen and then reheated later? Yeah. Yeah. It actually freezes really well. That's like one of the best things is that, um, that you can, I had no idea. I thought for some reason, I'm like, no, that that's, you can't, yeah, freeze. It, it freezes like be, it being so gosh darn dense. You're totally good. Um, should the two loaves be st- in a cool place for the two weeks? Cranberry? Yes. Um, Charisse, uh, place them sit somewhere cold, um, somewhere that's, cold but not super humid and not a lot of moisture in the air um like I I put mine in my garage because my garage is actually like 
that as cold as my fridge and um you know it's an insulated garage but it's still cold so that's good um or put it into like a fruit or veggie drawer in your fridge and move the humidity to low that should help I want to go back um, to the heated question oh. because I have a question. Wait, so yes. you can, so once it's, once you, it's frozen and you reheat it, how do you reheat it in the microwave or in the oven? Oh, you can toast it in the oven or you just let it thaw and you can eat it at room temperature again. It's totally fine. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this thing is hearty. This thing is like, a, is, is dense. Nothing will happen. There is a reason fruitcakes last <laughs> ever ever um because yeah they are they 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 are made to last um and they do they're again very forgiving recipe um for kate uh ship it in the cheesecloth in the foil yes you want to make sure that that moisture um and that alcohol doesn't completely evaporate and dry it out um once the alcohol evaporates completely um that allows uh bacterial growth to set in so you want to make sure that that alcohol stays uh, intact with the bread so that it doesn't mold or anything like that. So, yeah. Okay. I mean, they x-ray everything anyway. So it's like, they're, they're going to know that it's a fruitcake, not something nefarious that you're shipping in foil. <laughs> so. Well, they hope so. They're like, I mean, I mean, that must be such a funny image of people with someone pulling out. Right. <laughs> I have seen some really funny things go through TSA check lines at the airport. Like, People bring crazy things to x-rays. A fruitcake is going to be the least crazy of them. I promise. <laughs> um, so, and then, so back to gifting. So yeah. not wrapping it. I know mm -hmm. there's some fun ways and easy ways to wrap it. So we covered shipping. Yep. How would you shipping. wrap something like this? Um, and if you're, if you're not shipping it, um, I am also a huge fan of the gift bag because, um, well, I, I don't have a lot of time on my hands. So um, I love the wine gift bags. Um, if you find the uh, longer, taller ones, these loaves actually slip in there quite nicely. Um, and you can reuse these again and again, which is super handy. So um, you can slide this in into the top, add some extra decorations. Again, seeing where your kids can get involved with um, all of the holiday gifting and gift wrapping. I love these little um, felt, uh, where's the package for them? Um, little felt gingerbread men uh, kits. And I got this like at my Michael's Arts and Crafts store and my son helped me out. Um, and it comes with like 12 of them. So have your kids like, and it was like five bucks. So um, have your kids help out, make, have them make little felt gingerbread men. Or um, I also had my son, I, oh geez, now I just spilled them all. Um, I bought myself a new Cricut for Black Friday. Whoopsie. Oh, nice. And <laughs> Um, I, I cut out a bunch of holly leaves too. And so you can, mm -hmm. um, cut little, like if you have a paper hole puncher, um, cut little holes in them, have them string them up on some, um, on some jute twine and it'll give it that country kind of country homemade feel to it. Um, so there's always ways that you can add like personal touches to the gift wrapping for these other than just like a silver brick of, <laughs> Yeah, 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 exactly. But also, exactly. like, I love seeing people's faces then when they're like, what is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm also not above that. So um, let's see. Where did that other one go? Like, I had so many fruitcakes sitting around here. So I really, I do like this one because it... I mean, and it's, it's just a gorgeous, like little package that wow, like $3 and then the wine you your little gingerbread friend to it. Oh, that is cute. I mean, yeah. And so it's a homemade, I mean, it is a truly homemade gift and, and everybody can, can enjoy it. Um, and you know, feed some fruitcake to the kids and they'll sleep really good that night. Oh my gosh. Am I a terrible person? <laughs> I oh, you forget. Yeah. I mean, I, you know what? I just ate a slice of this and I do, I can like really, I mean, the alcohol is there, like you can really taste it, but it's, it is, I feel like it's, you know, it's very delicate though. It's not like hard. Yeah, it is. And that's why I like the two week aging process for this is that, um, it isn't over, it isn't overwhelming. Um, the two weeks really allows that brandy to, to mellow out. So you get the flavor, but you're not getting the bite. Um, and, and that's why I always recommend like two weeks after one week, you're going to have the bite from the, the, the fresh booze. Um, but anything after that, it really starts to mellow and you get all of those, um, like other spicy flavors from the all spice and the clove and the cinnamon coming through instead. So they all like work together. 
Oh my gosh. Yeah. Uh, Megan, you really uh, changed my mind on fruitcakes because so I good. just had no idea they could be this delicious and it's it was so easy to make. It is. It's totally easy to make. And that's, yeah, that's one of the things is like, um, I'm my, my four-year-old son loves to bake in the kitchen with me and, um, he can help shred zucchini. He can help pour out and start learning how to measure. I mean, it's a really easy recipe to get kids involved in, even if you don't add the booze or, you know, you do the booze part. Um, but it's just a fun family activity and it becomes a tradition. And that's one of the things that I love the most about it is that it's, it's got the fruit, it takes the time, but it shows people that you absolutely love it. Um, Kate, can you uh, glaze the whole loaf? Yeah, you can. Um, but uh, when the butter softens, it might stick to whatever wrapping you have it in. Um, so I would recommend that um, you glaze it before you serve it. Um, unless you're going to store it kind of just covered in the fridge, like with something that's not touching the glaze. So it doesn't get all messed up. Does that make sense? And you also mentioned um, another um, great tip is um, if you're going to do like, yeah, like a sauce, mm -hmm. you could have a jar on the side um, yes. and gift that together. And also like, mm -hmm. like fun ways to like, um, yeah, show, show everybody your fun tins. Yeah. Uh, so cute. Yeah. People really love these last time. I forget where, where did you get those again? So these are from Crow Canyon Home, like Crow, like the bird Crow Canyon. Um, I absolutely like, these are hands down my favorite baking <laughs> dishes they they make everything look impressive but the results I mean the porcelain and enamel coating basically makes everything nonstick, which is great um so I baked um I baked my fruitcake in one of these um and if you want to give somebody some new you know oh awesome thanks Catherine um some new dishes for the holiday season um put your fruitcake wrapped up back into the loaf pan and then um all you have to do is you know, you can make a like a little gift basket out of it. You can have a jar of the syrup. You can have a prepackaged, you know, really cute cellophane bag with all of the the um, chopped fruit with the apricots and the California prunes and everything like that, like ready to go. And one of the other things people love right now, and um, I did this, I did a bread baking class and I actually, oh, I don't have them. I don't have them here right now. Oh gosh, darn it. Um, is I had, recipe cards made. So I took the photos and um, I designed them on Canva, which was really fun. And I had them ordered and I ordered like 25 sets of recipe cards and packaged them up for people because they love that nostalgic tactile thing oh, to hold on so to. Smart. I love oh. recipe cards. We need to bring recipe. back those recipe cards. That's so you to fun. They totally do. I completely agree. Like there is a reason everybody loves, or just hand write them out. Like seeing my great grandmother's handwriting on recipe cards is like the biggest point of nostalgia and just like this heartwarming thing that you know she's not with us but she's with us you know yeah. um so I really love that so you know doing something like this where you're putting the fruit cake in here you've got your you've got your you know bag of fruit you've got your you know bottle of brandy or the syrup if you love somebody very very much <laughs> and then just wrap this up in a big cellophane bag like like you would like an Easter basket and then give that to them. They've got new dishes. They've got fruitcake. They've got a recipe that's from you oh. and, and everything to learn how to make it on their own and start their own new family traditions. Like hand re handwritten recipe cards, they are. Yeah, they're totally a treasure. I just adore that kind of thing. And so I hope this inspires everybody to, you know, start your own new family traditions and mix and match the fruits and see what works for you guys and just do this every year. Like change people's minds about fruitcake. <laughs> I know. Let's change. Let's change the world. Change his mind. <laughs> um, well, thank you for sharing your family tradition because it was just so sweet. And I just love how you got this recipe and mm -hmm. it just lives on. And like, yeah, it I, it's so delicious. And even for myself, I'll definitely be like playing around with this recipe and tweaking it mm -hmm. and adding, like, adding different things. I definitely, yeah, the, it, it's, it's just so much fun. I feel like you, this, it's really, you could, you could do so much with it. Um, you really can. Yeah. And don't forget the mini loaves are also a wonder too. Like, oh yeah, you know, fruit cakes. the mini, yeah, the mini fruit cakes and stuff. If you're just giving it to like one person and they don't want a whole loaf. Um, we met this, this recipe makes two standard size loaves. You can, um, make it in mini loaves and it's, it's automatically makes four, you know? So it's, so fun. it's really I handy to, to make, and it helps you stretch out the recipe, but, and stretch out the gifting a little, a little bit too. So. Oh my gosh. Well, thank you, Megan. And Megan, can you like let folks know what else you're working on? I know you did mm. like, a book during the holidays. What is next? You? You're doing yeah. Oh gosh. Well, great energy. People love you. 
Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you guys so much. I'm so glad so many people were able to tune into to our first class and then come back again and do our fruitcake reveal. Um, it, right now, my e-cookbook is on sale for $1.99 through the rest of the holidays. And um, you can go ahead, you can find it on my blog. It's called Scaled Down Celebrations. And um, yeah, buck 99, it's delivered right to your email and it's 10 recipes that are scaled down to say four to six instead of, you know, eight to 12. And um, everything is made ahead of time or prepped ahead of time so that it makes your holidays a little less chaotic. Um, you know, we're all still kind of living in this like weird little world and um, people aren't really sure what to do with the holidays, but they want to make sure that they celebrate. And this is a great way to still have that homemade holiday tradition and not have like leftovers for two weeks. <laughs> and of course the cookbook is still, yeah. I, I think I checked Amazon. It was on sale for like eight ninety eight. So if you don't have a copy, um, yeah. I think it's like, like, I think the cover price is like $21. It's like, yeah, it's $21. So yeah, that's a, yeah, oh my, that's a please. huge yeah. deal. So, um, to get this book, that's awesome. I, I love the book and so many people have made some recipes that are just, you know, tried and true family traditions for them now. Oh, that fruit cake. Oh, that stuff. French toast, man. Oh, that stuff is good. <laughs> yeah, no, you, have to do the, you have to do the fruitcake French toast. That was a sign. See, it really was. You just opened I up right to that. that page. It was right to here. It means that you need to do a fruitcake. I think I do. I really think I do. Yeah. You don't on TikTok. I think that would be, it would, it would, it would do well. Do yes. It. Yes. Oh yeah. And follow me on TikTok too. Yeah, <laughs> I'm on all the social TikTok. medias and, and you guys, you know where to find me, find me anywhere on country flavor. And that's where I'm at. <laughs> and I feel like and Megan, I, yeah, you could, I feel like you could message Megan. Megan would answer you. And oh then, yeah, totally. And plus it, it's a distraction from, you know, work, <laughs> work kids, you know, Work kids, kids are in daycare, you know, so it's like, you know, we're all answering emails. We're all working remotely. I need people to say hi to. So come say hi to me. I like that. Go say hi to Megan. And, um, you know, today's event is part of our holiday baking extravaganza. You know, we want to do a big shout out and thank you to California prunes. We love their prunes. I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big prune, prune mm -hmm. fan now. Um, thanks to Megan from this fruit cake class. I'm like, now I just, I, I need to have it as it's my snack. It's my go-to snack now, but thank you again, Megan, for everything. I'm so thank excited. You guys so much. Part three. I just need to, I need to see you every month. I know, you know, I'm really okay with that. That sounds like a plan. <laughs> <laughs> and again, thank you, you guys. Thank you, California Prince. And thank you everybody for tuning in to these two classes and stuff. It has been an absolute hoot and a half. And I look forward to doing this again. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, California Prunes. And happy holidays, everyone. Thank happy you for holidays, tuning everybody. in. You all are the bomb. <laughs>